Identity. Um, I want to share about a child I went through. I think it was yesterday or the day before. But anyway, can we um, read some scriptures? And uh, I just want to share on the reality of why this is. I bring it up all the time, but every time the Lord gives me a new revelation on it. But um, because I know there's one thing that all of a sudden when someone goes through trials, it's like they disconnect from the body and they go off by themselves. Rather than come to the solution, they run to the problem. So, um, but I want to share on, uh, if we, can we turn to 2 Timothy? Or 1 Timothy 4, sorry. sorry. <laughs> and, I, and I share with you the CD child I went to. Um, yeah, 1 Timothy 4, verse um, 1. Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Alright, and uh, another verse can we turn to uh, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 14 and 15. Anyway, yes. Yeah. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Okay. This is what happened the other day. Me and my wife uh, went through a bit of a child, and um, in the morning, I was having an awesome morning, and I was rejoicing in the Lord. God bless you, Jesus loves you, everyone. Flower moves. Oh, Jesus loves you too. <laughs> anyway, and um, my wife called me up uh, in the morning, and um, when I answered, I was like, Hello, the wife. She like, Hello. <laughs> Sorry? She like, Hello. Are you, are you alright? <laughs> anyway, and I'm here, I am trying to be all spiritual and stuff. <laughs> so, you know, I'm trying to put on my spiritual voice, talking to her. Nothing yet. It's, it's like I'm talking to a big wall, so I'm upset at you. And I'm like, oh, that's okay. And I start trying to do something. I start trying to like, I start trying to give her like holy words, like you know, righteousness words. You see? And I'll be honest, as soon as she said hello like that, I was moved straight away. Yeah. <laughs> spiritual and, and start trying to talk with a soft voice and make it look like any spirit that really like. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to talk to her and, um, anyway, I'm telling her about and you really, really have to learn to do it in the spirit. You really have to learn to pray for one another, stop being angry. <laughs> My wife starts talking back, and I'm getting frustrated now because I'm really, I'm not in spirit, I'm speaking out of knowledge. Because I was moved at first. And the more conversation goes on, I start raising my voice. You have to look to talk I'm sick of it. And as I begin to face you, I was like, you know what? I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to get prayer. I'll be right back. And then my wife starts trying to keep going. No, look, look, look. look. <laughs> so anyway, I hang up the hang up the phone, and it was during this trial that I got the the a revelation on uh, the the life of spirit how it can come in a form of a comforter, but it's not really wow. the Holy Spirit. See how it gives you scriptures to try and you know to try and ease the situation, but. It, the reality is, if, even in, like, when you go through the trial, it's really important to be slow to speak, sweet to hear, and slow to wrath. Because you know how it says, the, right, the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. So it was, it was through this trial that I began to realize, hey man, even during this time, if I'm not being so and vigilant in the spirit, I could be listening to the wrong voice and speaking the wrong things that could add fuel to the, to the trial rather than Another, because there's been many times we go through trials and um, I know when it's the Holy Spirit because a, a, um, a flood of revelations come it gives me scriptures and how to deal with this situation most of the time I stop and I'm like Lord, what do I say to deal with this and the Holy Spirit always gives the correct words the correct things to do and you know when it's the Holy Spirit because it gets squashed straight away but this time I found out it's a seducing spirit because I ended up fishing out 
so um, even with this during your trials, it's very important not to run away from the solution, which is Jesus, which is the fellowship of the saints gathering in the body. You begin to separate, disconnect yourself from the body, you open the doors to things that you 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 know how Jesus warned and um he said to take heed this for any means this uh, the light that he eat you beat darkness. Wow. You see, sometimes you can mistake something that's speaking to you for the Holy Spirit, but really it can be something different. You know when it's the Holy Spirit. Because he always aligns with the Word of God, as we will all know this many times, the Word of God, uh, the voice of God, confirms the Word of God. They work hand in hand, they never contradict each other. If they are contradicting, that's why it's very important to get back to the Word of God. It may not be an angel, it might not be the Holy Spirit speaking to us. So um, that's uh, a reality the Lord gave me this week, um, seducing spirits. Yeah. Being careful that it's not... Um, a devil talking to you? But I realized there's a devil talking to me, but because I was angry, I was like, yeah, yeah, what? That's true. And then I begin to speak it. The worst thing is, that, like, this time she say things, and, and here I am trying to be all spiritual again. And then I start hearing a voice talking to me, and be, be like, yeah, she's saying, you're not under grace, you're under law. <laughs> and then I'll be like, oh, so, um, well, what did you mean by that? Are you trying to say I'm under the law? Yeah, I'm not under grace, and then it feels from there. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's really important to just slow down, seek the Lord, yeah. and uh, make sure it's not a seducing spirit. I want to share a, a few testimonies of, uh, all right, leading up to, to leading up to temptations, right? Uh, okay, that's what the testimony is going to be about. Um, I'll read from James 1 verse um, 14. I'll read it and he says, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Wow. Okay. I always went, oh actually I did go for a trial, but this is where the reality of free, fully youthful lust came to play for me. One day I was at home and um, I was at home and uh, I was enjoying my time with the Lord. I was just one thing I always ask the Lord is, Lord, flood this place with your presence. I want this house to be a house that is always on fire for Jesus. But anyway, one day I was home by, alone. I was by myself and I was on the phone. And um, I was on the internet. I was looking up the definition uh, of a specific word because I went to the concordance, but then I wanted to know the definition. And then when I went to the definition on the internet, all of a sudden these pop-ups came out of nowhere. And when the pop-ups um, came up to, oh no, not today! <laughs> I got up and I ran away and I was like, oh, oh watch me, oh gracious <laughs> man. No, no, I did, I did run away and I, and I ran straight to the Lord and I was asking for God. And, and that, that was caught straight away. Amen. And that was when the Lord gave me a reality of fleeing him for us. You see, that go, run away. That's what I did. Oh, I want to swan dive into the next room. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, <laughs> that was the reality of uh, James 1, 14, and flee in plus. But going off on what Lightning was sharing before in um, Matthew 8, about, um, I'll read it out, 23. Um, yeah, 23 and 24. I'll read it out and it says, And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed, and behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. That's awesome. That really stands out to me because that's what you call rest in the Lord. Can you picture that? You're at sea with like your brother and one of someone's asleep during a thunderstorm? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, what is he doing that he's able to sleep during the thunderstorm and the waves? But that, that's the reality of resting in the Lord, that even through your trials, through the hard times, through the good times, yeah. when we're in the Lord Jesus, you can have this rest in the Lord no matter what it is. Yeah. And um, something the Lord was um, helping me understand is, um, all right. during your trials, I'll read from... Uh, John uh, 19 verse 30. 
And he says, When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and bowed his head and gave up the ghost. I've heard this many times before. Everyone always says, It is finished. And I'm like, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder what that means. Inside, I'm questioning myself. And it wasn't until I went through, a tra- um, went through this that I finally realized what he meant by it is finished. Like sometimes when you go through trials, when you, uh, to overcome and move forward, sometimes you think that you can work your way back up, work your way into Jesus. Because there, there's been times where I go through trials, sometimes past before I got the revelation of Jesus finishing on the cross. There were times where I used to go through trials and all of a sudden, I feel like I have to work my way for God's love. Work, work to, to earn God's love. Work to earn His forgiveness. Have, have you ever, has anyone ever gone through this? Like you go through trials and then um, when you're trying to overcome, all of a sudden everything becomes a bit dramatic. Please don't mean by everything becomes a bit dramatic. Before when I used to um, try to overcome, you wake up in the morning like, today I'm going to heal three blind men. I'm going to go and save 42 people. But like, you try to make it that work rather than understanding that it is finished. Yeah. Like you go and try to preach to people. Like, you're trying to force yourself to, to receive a revelation rather than what people are sharing. Sitting down, you're sitting at the Father's feet and just understanding that it is finished. He finished it. He did these works. Now we just have to believe. Through the trials, through the good times, hard times, when it's over, just believe it's finished and keep going. Amen. Knowing and believing that Jesus finished it. Yeah. So, that, that's it for me.